We've compared several infantry categories so far, but we haven't looked at any of the cavalry yet. Let's rectify that. Hi, my name is Mr. Smarlonky and welcome to the top 4 missile cavalry units in Shogun 2. Before we get started, I want to once again mention that this list is as always based mostly on my experiences in legendary difficulty single player campaigns, and thus I would not recommend using this list as a guideline for multiplayer. For this list I judge units on their overall performance. Factors include, but are not limited to, cost, building requirements and campaign limitations. Finally let's have a look at the contestants. The missile cavalry unit pool consists of a mere 4 units, of which only a single one is available in the base game, which is bow cavalry. The other three were all added in through DLC. These are Mounted Gunners, Thunderbus Cavalry, and Yoritomo's Yabusame Cavalry. These units are exclusive to the Tokugawa and the Tomo respectively, with Yoritomo's Yabusame Cavalry being available to all clans. Now that you've seen the contestants, feel free to leave a comment with your predictions. I'd love to see what you guys think. With all that finally out of the way, let's get into this rather short list. Starting us off at number 4 is Yoritomo's Yabusame Cavalry. This hero unit suffers from the same faults as a regular bow hero, in that archers as a rule are quite poor of low numbers, and losing even a single man means that Yoritomo's Yabusame cavalry loses 2.5% of its effectiveness. It also takes quite a while before you can even recruit these in campaign, and as a hero unit they're not even that useful. That is to say, all hero units inspire nearby troops, but since Yoritomo's Yabusame cavalry will generally be off somewhere skirmishing by itself, it doesn't really have the same kind of impact. Which leads to another downside of bow cavalry units in Shogun 2. Even though they have the ability to fire whilst moving, they cannot fire in a 360 degree circle around them, meaning that while you're skirmishing with them, they can only fire once they've turned toward the unit they're skirmishing with again. That's not to say they're 100% useless, they do still have that whopping 200 range, which allows them to fulfill that mini artillery role that regular bow hero fulfill too. That said, if you're going to use a unit like that, then the regular bow hero is the better choice, because they have more ammo and reload rate. All in all, Yoritomo's Yabisame cavalry just got outclassed on all fronts, and that's why I put them lowest on the list. Coming in at number 3 is bow cavalry. As you might expect, this unit has a lot in common with Yoritomo's Yabisame cavalry, mainly that while it can fire whilst moving, it cannot fire in a 360 degree circle while doing so, making the ability mostly pointless. I do need to of course acknowledge the fact that both units have the Swooping Crane ability, which can be combined with turning on Skirmish, which would in theory mean that they can fire whilst moving in a 360 degree circle. In practice though, it doesn't really work. Not only does it mean your unit gets tired super quickly, but they will also constantly get caught as the Skirmish ability just doesn't work that well in combination with the Swooping Crane ability. And once a single man is caught in melee, the entire unit turns around and starts meleeing. Now, I didn't place this unit higher up on the list for no reason and that the reason is simply unit size. Bow cavalry have double the men of Yoritomo's Yabusame cavalry, which means they can do a lot more damage over time, and they're a bit easier to recruit. I also think that for skirmish cavalry to work properly, you need a few units, and bow cavalry can be recruited as much as you want, while Yoritomo's Yabusame cavalry are of course limited to a single unit. Now personally, I don't really use either unit in campaign, but if you're desperate to use some archer-based skirmish cavalry in your army, bow cavalry is the way to go. Moving on to number 2, where I have placed the Mounted Gunners. There's a pretty big jump in quality between the number 3 and 2 spots, which is easily explained. As you'll all be well aware, gun units deal a lot of damage over a very short period of time. While they fire a bit slower than bow units, each volley does infinitely more damage. A big difference between infantry and mounted gun units is that the infantry are limited to only the frontline firing unless you turn on the inferior fire by rank ability. Mounted gun units don't suffer this problem, they will always have all man fire no matter how deep their formation is. Combine this with the fact that they have the same number of men as their bow cavalry counterparts, and you can see why they are so much better. The main problem as usual with gun units is that they are notoriously difficult to obtain, and the mounted gunners are no exception, needing a stables, but more importantly a gunsmith. This is one of those cases where they are certainly worth the commitment though, as the mounted gunners will top the kill list time and again. Finally at number 1 I have placed a Dunderbus cavalry. Those of you who have been watching me for a while will not be surprised by this placement in any way shape or form. Thunderbus cavalry are a personal favourite of mine, for good reason. When I made a list on the top 5 most powerful units in Shogun 2, the Thunderbus cavalry were right at the top, as they absolutely decimate any unit in a single volley. They might not have the range of their matchlock counterparts at number 2, but they make up for that in absolute monstrous firepower. 
As I mentioned earlier, the mounted gunners can fire with their entire unit at the same time, unlike infantry gun units. Thunderbus cavalry enjoy that same privilege. Now imagine 80 men firing what is essentially a shotgun at the same time, and you'll start to see why this unit earns the number one spot. When it comes to recruitment requirements, the Dunderbus cavalry once again have the upper hand, only needing a powder maker and warhorse stables, with the powder maker being far easier to obtain than the gunsmith mounted gunners require. You could argue that Dunderbus cavalry are a difficult unit to micro due to their short range, but I'd argue they're worth it, and due to their stupendous damage there's not much microing needed anyway, as they'll slaughter or rout almost any unit in a single volley. That's gonna do it for the top 4 missile cavalry units. Let me know what you think of my list and tell me which category you'd like to see covered next. Check out my merchandise store if you love Shogun 2 as much as I do. If you enjoy these types of videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon, it really helps me a lot. You'll find all the relative links in the description. Thank you very much for watching, hope you've enjoyed, have a good day, and goodbye.